Oh, hi, welcome to my sixth episode of Ether Physics. Today I want to talk about uh, vortices and the shapes of vortices and the idea of a vortex. Basic idea of uh, vorticity is that it is a fluid. Uh, and the rules of fluids and mechanics of fluids apply to the rules of vortices. So we gotta have that in mind when we try to construct an atom that is actually a vortex. Um, so the basics would be the idea of pressure, the idea of a velocity of particles of the fluid, yeah, and the vorticity. And vorticity itself is a, is a, is a way a vector shapes or it's a way, it's a rotation of a fluid particle. That's the most easy way to think about vorticity is the rotation around the angle of a particle. I don't know why I'm doing this, but for some reason. There are a couple of terms in, in fluid dynamics about vortices. Let me think about how to phrase this sentence. Usually when people are thinking about vortices, they think about a rolling vortex. And that is a vortex tube itself. And the vortex tube is filled with particles in vortex lines or vortex threads. Uh, it, it depends on the way people express themselves with vortices. But the vortex line is one line of particles parallel to each other with the same uh, vorticity factor. A vortex tube would be a tube, a collection of multiple particle lines together. So, you know, if we, if we take a tube, this would be the tube, here would be its center, and it would, for instance, rotate in a counterclockwise rotation. We can imagine the fluid itself being enclosed by something. So we just have, well, we, can, we can even visualize it being in a can of water, for instance. So if there will be a glass of water and we would rotate it for like half an hour or maybe a little bit more, all the particles would have the same vorticity factor. So inside the tube, while it's rotating, it would create a pressure outwards. Because something that's rotating wants to go centripetal, wants to go outside and we're holding it in a container. This could be, for instance, glass, but in water or in air, it could be the pressure of the air itself. We can call this, this circle around the vortex, we can call it the contour. And this contour can, can stretch and it can tilt or not the contour, the vortex can stretch or it can tilt. If the vortex is stretching, and stretching of a vortex in an incompressible fluid would mean that all the particles inside the vortex would be conserved. So if this one would stretch, it would eventually look like a smaller tube with the same central axis, but it would be way longer. It's not a perfect new tube. And what actually happens is that all these lines are stretched out and when it stretches out, the vorticity factor will increase. If there is no friction or there is no pressure differential around the vortex, the contour will stay the same shape. Yeah, about vortex pressure, stress and vorticity. So, if we have, for instance, a vortex and we're gonna grab this old vortex again the X of rotation down in the middle here uh, would have the least pressure because of the rotation the pressure would go outwards so we call this P0 on the edge of the vortex tube the pressure would be P1 so P1, damn, you see this? Thing ain't working. Okay, I'm gonna try and write down this mathematical easy formula. So P1 would be the same as P0, but plus all the kinetic energy that goes outwards. And that would be a half, time the density 
times the speed of velocity at the edge. So the speed of rotation, the tangential velocity factor. So that will be on the contour, the velocity. And that velocity we're gonna call it, well I call it C, because I believe it is a constant in light. So yeah, that will be your basic formula to know the pressure of the vortex. Within this vortex, we can, we can call this black line in the middle the center of gravity. Because everything that's inside this vortex will eventually be pushed to the center because of the fact that the pressure out at, at the edge of the vortex is higher than in the center of the vortex, as you can see in this formula. P1 will always, always be bigger than P0. So that's a basic idea of thinking about vortices. Uh, yeah, I think that's enough for today. Uh, it's, it's already hard because it's not easy if you're not known to mathematics and it's not easy if you're known to expressing physical things with, with math. So thanks a lot for watching. Hope to see you next time. And be sure to comment because comments really help me out. Wow, that, that's sucky. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>